call somebody and I almost woke up a couple of people uh, but I didn't I know that people are just cutting logs pretty heavy at four o'clock in the morning ain't it and my wife she, she I wake her up sometimes like that and she just can't go back to sleep and I uh, I've been trying to uh, honor her with that she hadn't requested it but uh, this morning when I knew she was awake I called her and told her about it thank the Lord and I uh, of famine and a shortage of food something that happened in the whole world I mean it was like the whole world was going through a, a period of, of of I mean it was just like the stores was cleaned out all over America the stores was totally was nothing something there was a, a fear hit the people and something happened that the fear hit the people and they just rushed rushed into them to the grocery stores and bought everything there was nothing left on the shelves and immediately <clears throat> the Lord uh, spoke to me he said they, I said in the last days you know Jesus said in the last day, he didn't just say there's wars. Look at all the countries right now that's in a personal war. Look at the Egypt and look at all these countries that's, that's in a conflict of war. Conflict of war. And when we, we, it happened while we was in over there in uh, uh, north, I guess it's the north, Anyway, it was out there where Tarzan does his stuff. You know, and he, he, he climbs in trees like monkeys and things. I never did see him, though. Man, we went six or seven hours, just nothing but forest. Mountains, no lights. I thought to myself, Lord, don't let nothing happen to this land cruiser. Man, I said, a booger get me sure enough. <laughs> Man, it went in places, you know, you'd be afraid to be out there. Really? And got back in there, there's a half a million people way back in there that Brother, uh, somebody had put Brother Dave in contact with and he went in there and going to one of the greatest African meetings. We've been having great meetings in Africa. I'm telling you, the Lord is, uh, none of these places has is, is been few people, been uh, just multiplied to thousands and all of them is has not heard the word they're, they're back in there you know worshiping the rustifiers you know that's where you rush the fire you know down in the islands jamaica and all that part of the world that's where the all these rustifiers came from you know when it, when the, uh, every brought them in there, when uh France and mostly England, you know, brought them into those uh, islands. You know, they took up all them islands, brought all them uh, uh, Africans in there, captured them, brought them in there. That's how them islands got made, whether you believe it or not. They didn't just go down there and find them islands. That's the reason most of them people in them islands are Africans. They brought them in there, and somewhere or another they got liberty, but not their ancestors. But, and uh, the Lord spoke to me back up in there that something so beyond human is going to happen. I want you to look here. It came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And behold, I came up out of the River, seven well-fed cows, favored cows, and fat flesh, and they fed in the meadows. Behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean flesh, and stood the other cows upon the banks of the river. And the 
favor and thin, well favored and thin flesh cows that eat up the seven well favored uh, fat cows. So Pharaoh woke and he slept and dreamed seeing uh, the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up on one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears with blast and they with it blasted with the east winds sprung up after them, and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh woke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh, the chief butler to Pharaoh, said, I do remember my fault this day. Pharaoh was angry with his servant and put him in inward in the captive of the guardhouse, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream one night, and I and he were, we dreamed. And a man, according to the interpretation of his dream, and, the, and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant of the captive of the guards we told him the interpretator told him and and he interpreted to us our dream to each man according to his dream he did interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was he restored he restored to me my office and him and the other he hanged then Pharaoh sent and called to Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved, he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. There is, I tell you, I don't like this light. And none that can interpret it. And I have heard saying of you that you can interpret, can understand dreams to interpret it. Joseph answered, Pharaoh said, Is it not in me? God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. An answer of peace. And Pharaoh and said to Joseph, In my dream I be... Behold, I stood up on the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven fat calves, cows, fat and flesh, well favored, and fed in the meadows. And behold, seven other cows came up after them, and they are with ill flesh, favored, and thin flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for baldness. And the lean and the ill flesh favored flesh did eat up the first seven fat cows. When they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were all still ill favored. And at the beginning, so I awoke. And I saw my dream. And behold, seven ears of corn came up and one stalk full and good. And behold, seven ears withered and thin, and blast with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this to, to the magicians, and there was none that could declare it. Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good ears Good cows are seven 
years. And the seven good ears are seven years. And the dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored cows that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall, shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. What God is about to do. And he showed to Pharaoh. Behold there came seven years of great plenty. Throughout all the land of Egypt. And you know the story. And when I woke up. Immediately. God. Uh, of course I know these scriptures. God. Uh, had me to. Uh, I remarked these scriptures. That were there. And I saw in my vision at four o'clock that the supermarkets was empty. I saw the grocery stores was empty. I saw malls gutted. And the Lord Jesus spoke to me, said, I've just I've tolerated and I've blessed America, I blessed the world. But all they have done is replenish me and, and with blaspheme words and their mouths not honored me, not going to church, not honored me. God is so dishonored. God is, and, and He is so dishonored. And God's fixing to vindicate. You can watch what I'm telling you today. Something is about to get our attention. God has is, is put up with us long enough. I said, God has put up with America and Europe long enough. You, if, if you knew, if you knew, and in my vision, I saw that, that people was this. And you know, this is a good time of year to think about this. I saw this is uh, getting garden time. I mean, people's real gardeners are already breaking up their land and hauling out their compost out of their barns and going to the chicken houses. And you know, the chicken houses is, uh, is uh, have them. Uh, I know we live over our, close to a cow barn, a big dairy, and they pile it up out there, all that that compost, and they cover it up with uh, uh, those tarps and you know, those white uh, uh, vinyl, and they let it work and they pile it up and then they have tractors to work it up and they, they sell that to the to people all over the country as you know, it's better it's natural fertilizer you know this whole chemical fertilizer it makes stuff grow but that, that chemical fertilizer gets in the food and that's caused a lot of our sickness all most all of our food is grown by the chemical fertilizer it's not like it the the you know the organic you ain't got nothing organic hardly no more. If you ain't got organic growth by, by natural means, and you're going to, uh, whether you know it or not, when you, you grow that corn uh, that and beans, everything you grow out of that chemical, it, it gets in that food. Just like when you uh, eat that food, that food gets in all your body. It just don't go in your belly. Your blood picks it up quickly in your stomach and takes out that all the everything that's in your food Put it in your bloodstreams. Once it gets in your main bloodstreams, you got those thousands and tens of thousands of little blood veins that you couldn't even see on an X-ray. But you cut your finger, you cut any, just a, just give your skin a light cut, just tiny, and blood will shoot out because you just got uh, uh, thousands and tens of thousands of little veins that you don't even see going through your flesh, and if what you eat. It's what you are. And God spoke to me. He said, I have tolerated. I have put up with America and the church. And I have put up with my people. You know, God, God's tired of having a... You just get up and prophesy and speak and move on real men of God get up there and rebuke and then people get mad at us. I get so tired of being rebuked. Well, it's not really a rebuke. It's actually trying to exhort you, trying to urge you to listen 
to God. I tell people sometimes, I said, uh, there was time in history that God, uh, through my kind of preaching, killed people. I mean, absolutely. There was times God throwed rocks out of heaven and killed people. There was time He, he throwed hailstones out of heaven. Didn't He? There was time He poisoned their waters. There was time God polluted the waters and the waters killed them. Did you know that? It's in the Bible. God. And, and, and God, uh, as I woke up, though I could just, the Spirit speaking to my heart, God is warning me. You know, I, I've warned the people that sometimes I just get sick of it. You know, and I go for, sometimes I told Sister Terrell, the other day she was praying, she was talking to her, and she said, said, you know, you're not warning the people. I know it's your tapes you're sending in. You're not warning the people. You're lifting up Jesus. But said, them warnings. Said, I need them warnings. You know, and everybody needs them warnings too. You know, I, I, I love lifting up Jesus. That's the joy of my life is to exalt Him and, and to praise Him because God has given me a gift of Himself in my life that if I lift up Jesus and get people's eyes on Jesus, that the, the very critical of the criticals are healed. And the masses are made whole. You know, uh, uh, days of old Roberts, his healing ministry only lasted, the real healing ministry, about 10 or 12 years. Alan's ministry lasted him about 4 or 20 years. You know, he made it in his top ministry. He didn't come forth to 49. He died uh, just after turn in, in, in 1970. He didn't come out, you know, uh, of really uh, doing the works of God, even though God spoke to him in the 30s, it took him what? Uh, uh, 30 something years, 13 years uh, of just working on himself after he had the vision, and sometime in the 30s before he, after that long fast to get his life right. God told me he had 13 things to get out of his life. Man alive, don't tell me how many I got in mine. I said, Lord, ain't may not have enough years. <laughs> If it took a year, <laughs> uh, took him a year each year to get him out of his life, he did. That's what he said. You ever read that book of the price of the miracle working power? Man, it took him 13 years. And then on that last one, he didn't get rid of that for a long time. <laughs> he said that was the worst of all. That last one that he got out, he even on up in, uh, uh, in the 50s. And that happened in 33 or 32 that when all that happened, but it took him in the 50s before I heard him say, uh, he at last, that, that I looked back and that last thing that I wrestled with was gone. Probably come back on him before it was over. <laughs> but yo, God's God. But we're fixing to see some hard times. I know you think these are hard times. More people out of job right now in this country than ever been. And people losing jobs every day. But I'm not just talking about losing jobs. I'm talking about we're fixing to see some empty stores. Not only in America. You watch it. When this thing hits, all Europe, China, Russia, something is fixing to happen in the earth that's going to cause a food shortage. Only 7 billion people across this great uh, earth planet that you and I live on. It's time for God's people. And I begin to, as, as I come out of this, this vision, I begin to see that, that, that God's people were stirred up. You know, Joseph went out and he began to take over. Now, Joseph is working with a bunch of uh, uh, idol worshipers. These people don't know Jesus. They worship the Pharaohs and they worship the pyramids. <laughs> I mean, old pyramids is still standing over. I've been to them. They're still standing over there and in, in Egypt. And there's, there's, it's a sight to see them things. Sight to see them things, them pyramids. It was built back there in the days of, of Egypt and Joseph and, and times, uh, back in them times, the pyramids went up. They're still standing. They, they just look like they're never going to crumble. They're built so good. But I want to tell you right now, this is an hour. This is a time that God, I saw Him, He's putting all of the Scriptures out. You hear what I'm telling you? 
God is telling me to tell His people He's pulling out the Scriptures. It's been laying dormant. The war, the war Scriptures. The famine Scriptures. The plagues. The plagues. You know, famine and food shortages and people get where they just eat just anything they eat brings about sicknesses and plagues. They said plagues. And you read in Revelation, God speaks about the angels of the plagues. God speaks about the, 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 there's a, a ministry of a, a prophetic ministry that, that spoke and the whole earth being plagued. Calling fam, famines upon the earth. You go back to the witnesses and you go back to these messengers of the Bible. You go back to the Old Testament and thousands of years before Jesus came and even after Jesus came, there have been great famines in the world and starvation because when people forget God, this ain't the only generation that forgot God. Well, look at that first, uh, uh, after Jesus walked the earth to, uh, 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 I read up to, uh, in the early part of the second century, John lived in 07 uh, of the uh, second century, and they don't know, they have no record of him ever dying. They don't know what happened to him. They said he just, uh, John just, they have, have no grave. They have no, uh, he wasn't among the mortars. He was the only one who wasn't among the mortars. And they, they have no grave. They have no sight. They don't know what happened to him. Some even think God caught him up somewhere. Because, you know, uh, God told him in Revelation, you should prophesy again to nations and kindreds. And John only preached and prophesied in that Jerusalem, in that area. He never prophesied to the nations. And I, I don't know what that means. It, I mean, it could be a, a God putting that same spirit on me and others. I went to the nations, uh, over uh, 200 of these countries, more than probably any other man ever lived, to th these nations. And, and if God had helped me, we, right now we've got our goal right now to reach 54, 55 other countries we hadn't been in to try to get the gospel and try to get Jesus' message. Even we were scheduled in October to go into Pakistan. We were scheduled to go into March, but on the plane, God, uh, it was April, I was scheduled to go to uh, Pakistan. They already gave me permission, gave me a permit to come and preach, which I'd never done for any other minister, to come and, and preach in ten cities uh, throughout uh, uh, Pakistan, and I'd planned to start that journey in, in, uh, uh, in, in, in April. But God told me on the plane, said, I want you to put that off. Said, something fixing to happen. And time I got back, two or three days, all that, man, uh, uh, Pakistan's in an uproar right now. How many know about that man? That, I, I didn't know about that man. You know, that, that, I who he was, somebody from Washington. I don't watch that, but I ain't even kept up. I don't watch the news, so I don't let that influence me. But I haven't heard any reported. The last little time I heard, I cut the fox on leaving the room uh, four, five, six, seven, eight nights ago. And I, uh, I heard him. They was talking about that, that, that they said they was going to kill him, but they had him in a moving from one prison cell to another because them people was trying to break in that one and get him and put him somewhere else where he wouldn't, they wouldn't know where he's at. And and if that happens, that's going to be a big trouble there. You know, it's going to be a big trouble there if that happens. But we know we are right now in the you watch it. America is right now setting right. America setting right now. At a place you ain't never sat. Did you realize who we got as a president? You know who he is? He's a Muslim. You see how he's taken up for them Muslims over yonder? You see how he's that that, that brotherhood Muslims taking all them countries over and he's for them? Man, you don't know where we at. And God told me, y'all know it. I told y'all 40 years ago and more that we were going to fall into a, a hand of an evil ruler. Y'all heard me speak that, that one day we were going to have a president that was going to sell us out. And it's just prophecy. I wouldn't be real if I watched, if this man in there. You know, people jumped onto me back when he was running because I was pulling for him. Somebody said, why? I said, I saw a black president in 1951. 
And I said, God told me when a black president was president in America, God going to pull all the plugs out. I said, that's the reason that it's time for America. I said, it ain't going to be good for the country, but it's going to be bad. But America needs this. We need to be brought back to our knees where when that church bell start ringing, people is already dressed to go to church. You hear me? I said, when the church bell starts ringing, it's time for people to already have the church clothes on and ready to get in their cars that the church doors are open and get in church. You ain't going to get nothing sitting at home. You said, I sit at home, read my Bible. Oh, you better do like my wife does. She can't get fed at the church. So she, she got a, a, a tape going in every room. I think she got that thing wired up. When I go home, I, well, I go in one room, here I am preaching. I go, I, said, I go in my room and I shut the door. I said, I don't want to hear me. <laughs> Man, I hear me. <laughs> About all the time, then. <laughs> I said, I don't want to hear me. I want to be with you. She got them. She would get up two or three hours. Man, I hear me preach. I wake up and I'm preaching. I go somewhere else in the house and I'm preaching. But, but the, she lives on that word. She lives on that word. It, we're, we're in an hour, folks. There's God. God, I, God had a reason this morning at 4 o'clock. I saw a, a world food shortage. Something God is going to smite the, the, the rice fields. God's going to smite the wheat fields. God's going to smite the corn fields. You're going to find that corn flakes and other kind of uh, uh, shears is made out of corn and, and other things. You're going to see it in the sky. You're fixing to see gas, five, four, and five bucks a gallon. You watch it. We're headed for some bad trouble. You hear me? I said we are headed for some bad trouble. Did you know we get more than uh, 60% of our oil out of that Qaddafi uh, country over there? Libya. More than 60%. The two, three or four last presidents we've got, Obama shut down. All that offshore driving down, or drilling down yonder, and other presidents have done the same thing, shut down drilling, because they say they can buy it over yonder cheaper, they can drill it, but we've got oil enough to, to, to we got enough oil in this country and offshore that we could have enough fuel to, to fuel up the world. More than anywhere else. But you know why? God has led us fall into the hands of, of, of narrow-minded leaders. They're not for our benefit. They're not for our benefit. They're just trying to make a name for themselves. And then they want that $200,000 a month, a year, the rest of their life, free. I they out, man, they, they set for life. The next president, they go and make speech and they get ten, twenty-five thousand dollars, five thousand, ten thousand dollar speeches. They make speeches all over the world and they don't make them free. Amen. That's all it is. It ain't, they ain't trying to be president of this country. It's to, it's to be among very few. I believe George W. Oh, oh, that God put him in there to get us through that time. God told me, y'all know it, that George W. when he was governor of Texas, I prophesied and spoke that George W. is going to run for president. It's going to be in a time of America's trouble like America ain't had. And he wasn't in the, the White House a year till, till them planes hit them towers. And I started in Corpus Christi, 1966. I saw them towers. I saw them jets. They just come out with jets. I saw the towers. I saw in Corpus Christi, I said, them towers. I didn't know there's any towers up there. And there wasn't at that time. They didn't get built and dedicated somewhere in the 70s. 
the late 70s or 80s something, those towers, I said, I saw them two big old towers in New York and they were brought down. I said, when the towers fall, God gave me a scripture over there in the Bible, when the towers fall, didn't say tower, when the towers fall, that trouble was going to hit the world. Well, the world is starting into a time of trouble since the towers fell. And, and, and oh, one, you hear what I'm talking about? Uh, Ten years ago when the towers went out, a uh, world went under an end time generation. We've gone into a time of trouble and we're not standing on our knees. And God said in, in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and Luke 21 and Luke 17, the only way we're going to get through is watching and praying. We're not going to get it watching television. We're going to get it on our knees. We're going to get it fasted. We're going to get it crying out to God. We're going to get it brought into heaven. Crying out to the heaven. I'm a God to help us. And I saw this morning. You know, I just thank God this is happening in the spring. I'm going to alert the people. You still, this is this February. You got plenty of time to get them gardens ready. You don't need this little old, uh, a patch bigger this year. Some people, you know, one person, well, I got me a garden. When I looked at it, what it bigger than this platform? <laughs> I said, man, all you going to do is get you a few mess of beans and a few mess of turnip <laughs> I said, you got about a week of eat. You hear what I'm telling you? Man, you need a garden as big as this building. Then that ain't enough to take you through. You hear what I'm telling you? You need a garden as big as this building. I went down in our front yard and, and uh, Major Dalton had the guys to put, put a fence in our front yard and, 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 and it was all Bermuda grass. And the boy that's on seen people looking at me, you know. Ain't nothing going to grow here. I said, Lord, show me down under that. Man, we had, we planted a garden. That garden just never died. We're right on through the winter. Three winters. Summers. Praise God. I thought, what in the world's happened to this garden? I thought this boat, all this bad weather, frost boat would kill it, but it didn't. But we got another. And I went behind our house and had some trees cut down and, and a, a Fix another behind our house. Just there. Of course, we got plenty of places for gardens. Lord God, I just wanted up there to the house. <laughs> and all this is, them little old saplings went out there and, and got them blowed up and pulled up. And out there, boy, that's good land. And we ain't even had to fertilize it. Well, you hear what I'm telling you? We need to hear God. Some of y'all don't even have chickens. You don't even have eggs. You don't even have nothing. You know what I'm telling you? I mean, you better wake yourselves up. Man, you're fixing to go down to them boats and they're not going to be bringing in that food. And more transfer trucks are going to be hauling something else beside food. I mean, they, God is calling. Yeah, when, in times like this, Egypt had forgotten God. The world had forgotten God. And they put God's prophet in prison. They didn't know it was a prophet, but that's the reason you got in prison to start with. It low down, sorry, no good for nothing, brothers. It's a truth. He had that wisdom in him. All of them didn't have that smarts. He had ever what that was in him. He, he was smart. He everything. He'd be all the time as a little old boy telling things. It's going to be, and, and and it would come to pass. You go back to Joseph, his little boy life. He was seeing things that was coming to pass. And finally his brothers got jealous and they all went out, you know, and claimed that, that a, a, some animal got him and they killed some animal and brought some little stains of his blood back, but they sold him to the Egyptians. Amen. As a slave. And he grew up as a slave. And he was so, he was nice looking and he was, a, he kept up, kept, held himself up. Because he knew who he was. God had showed him who he was. He didn't let all of that he went through get him down on himself. Y'all know what happened. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, the caretakers who he's taking care of a house, the wives wanted him to go to bed with her and she wouldn't do it because he was so much more nice looking and, and, and clean built than her husband was. He probably some old slouch, you know. And she, she tried to get him to, 
to, to go to bed with her and he ran and she, she ripped off some of his clothes or something other and then she told her husband that he tried to rape her. Lied as Jerry Clarence said, like a lying dog. <laughs> Remember that? Lying dog. <laughs> that dog was talking. <laughs> said, I saw Grandpa kissing somebody. <laughs> well, he got rid of that dog, didn't he? <laughs> Do it off a train. Let the train get it. <laughs> well, let's get on, Jerry Clarence. <laughs> but that's the way people are. Like Jerry Clarence is lying dog. Yeah. Yeah. You know, used to hunt, hunt people. You know, used to hunters used to have dogs that they claim lying. I was a hunter. I always had good dogs. They never lied on me. And when they told me a squirrel was up a tree, he'd be up. If he didn't, he'd be jumped to another. I'd look over around and he'd be in another tree. If he, if he run a rabbit in a hole, man, I didn't mind reaching out and getting that rabbit, but the feet pulled him out. I knew I wasn't going to pull out a, uh, some coon. Because <laughs> that dog didn't lie. When I told her I want to go squirrel hunting, she got me squirrel, and I said, I want some rabbits. She didn't run get some, some kind of a creature that attacked me. Man, them rabbits running them logs. I didn't mind reaching up in there. I knew I wasn't going to get my hand of a rattlesnake. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Jerry Clarence, he had uh, some lying dogs. And you got a bunch of lying preachers. Hey? How many know you got a bunch of lying preachers up here telling people you're going to be raptured out? Don't worry about tribulations. Well, I ain't, I ain't never kept up with them dudes, but somebody told me they wasn't saying too much about all that stuff no more. They wasn't preaching rapture much no more. What I heard of them TV preachers, too much of happening. Man, they had us out of here before midnight when the clock turned 2,000 and nobody left. But some of them left the uh, TV stations. <laughs> some of them went off television. When they woke up one morning, people didn't support them no more because they lied all that time. You know, I heard Jan and all of us up there just, uh, uh, I was traveling. I heard Jan, they was all talking and Jan was uh, saying, might have been on TV, I didn't watch him never, but they was talking and said, we're going to be raptured out before the clock turns midnight, 2000. And, said, and, and they was taking up that money and somebody called it. If it just before it happened, said, if y'all going to be raptured out, why are y'all raising that money? And they, right on TV, they calling in and people bragging. And, and she said, uh, she said, well, said, oh, the, the money we're taking up, said, to those that didn't make the rapture is going to take the ministry on. <laughs> That's what I heard that heifer, I mean, that woman say. <laughs> I mean, you know. Stupid. And people believe that. And then when it didn't happen, they didn't turn on them. Man, if God don't bring a, a word that I speak to pass the next day, people be talking about me. You know? But I don't care. When God speaks, He lays His word up. He got word laid up, spoke by the Old Testament prophets. He got word laid up by Isaiah. He got word laid up for, for, for Moses. He got word laid up for Ezekiel, Jeremiah. He got word laid up for Malachi. That God was going, He got word led up for 2,000 years from John. John said He's going to raise up an army, didn't He? A number that no man could number. And He was going to send them forth. He, John said over 2,000 years ago, there's going to be two witnesses. It's going to hit the earth before for the end of the world. And if you're going to call anybody a false prophet, call him. But it's still going to happen. Because they said it should come to pass in the latter time. In the latter days, in the latter times it shall come in. We're getting into the latter time. God is calling in the scriptures. I mean, I never seen it just like something happened so quick, just in like a day or a week, that people rushed into the supermarkets and the Walmarts and all the stores of the world and there was nothing left. Nothing on the shelves.
And people was walking the streets, breaking in people's houses, stealing their food. Oh, it's a time that, that, that God's people, if we've ever, first thing we need to do is to put on the whole arm of God. That's the most important thing. But you can still take care of yourself and put on the whole arm of God. You don't have to get so spiritual minded you ain't no earthly good. You know, we got some people so spiritual minded that they ain't even spiritual minded either. They just think they're spiritual minded. They ain't, no, they ain't, they ain't, good, for, they ain't good for salt. <laughs> it's the truth and you know it. It's, it's waking up time. Man, I mean, you can get out there. Man, I can, I can get out there in the garden. I can get out there and, and do anything and pray. Sometimes I like to horseback ride. I got, uh, boy, them people up here, my mommy's people, they got me. I got all kind of wagons down there. All kind of wagons. Horses. And I have one of them, hook one of them horses up sometimes, two of them. If I want to go a little faster, I hook up two of them. I got buggies that you can uh, go to church in the snow. In. I got a buggy with a heater in it. <laughs> That's right, man. One of them mummies things look like a little car. And you got to figure you just. The windshield they pull you lies right under it. The horse that made you say, kick, kick. Boy, oh, they're gone. And I just lean that line either way and they'll turn. Them mummies people sent me. Boy, they, I like them mummies people. Boy, they, uh, if anybody will make it through them times, they'd be the ones. Right. <laughs> I'll go up there every year and stay two or three days with them. It's getting pretty close now. That Sister Earl said, you going to the Amish or you come, going to come and stay with me? I said, I'll probably be at the Amish. She, she wants to go up there sometimes. Well, I've got, I've got them believing in Jesus now, man. They, uh, uh, they, one of them had cancer and God healed him. Another had a heart trouble and God healed him. So now they begin to ask a little prayer. And they all, they all good. They don't drink. They don't smoke. And they, they, just, they just believe in the... More like the Old Testament, but they believe in Jesus Christ as our salvation. Yes. But I tell you, they're the only people in the world that something goes in there that can make it through these times that's coming. You know, y'all remember years ago I said you're going to live like the Mennonites and the Amish. I've been saying that over 40 years and I didn't know what them people was. Until I said it so much they got wind of it and sent for me to come up there. Who is this guy keep talking about us, good about us? They asked me, say, who are you? I said, I'm the nobody <laughs> trying to come a somebody. <laughs> Wanting to be something for Jesus. How many of you want to be a somebody for Jesus? Amen. This is our folks. We need a, we need a prayer ministry. Amen. We need an intercessory. Amen. We need something other. Just clip through that Bible. Just clip through that Bible there and see if you see... Uh, uh, if it's Mark, just look through it a little bit. Just turn around, look around. Man, just look. Just see that? Thank you, Jesus. And I'll do two or three of them a year, at least two a year, reading them Bible, marking them. Thank you, Jesus. You know when you mark a scripture, it sort of uh, it sort of helps you remember. I don't know about y'all. I just if I leave it, it don't. Register. But if I mark it and check that little mark and rub it through there, it makes me remember it. You know, somebody wants to remember uh, all this other stuff. But man, I pray God stir up my pure mind, stir up my spirit to pray, stir up my spirit to fast. God, give me a fasting spirit. God, give me a praying spirit. God, get this nibble spirit off of me. You ever want to fast and nibble it through? <laughs> Be honest about it. I know I ain't asked you to raise your hand. 
But you know what you're too? You know, you try to fan, you wind up nibbling. <laughs> Somebody said, come on eat. I'm not eating. <laughs> but you nibble all day long. <laughs> God wants us to get bummed out of heaven. Open up our hearts. When Jesus said, this kind come through prayer and fasting, that's what he meant. He don't just talk about just kind of devil by itself. I mean, if we're going to get something from God, that Jesus got it, why would, the, why would God himself have to be driven in the wilderness away from everybody to fast and pray and drink nothing but water for, for 40 days and nights and come back as the Son of God? He went in there as the Son of Man, came back as the Son of God. Come back as God in the flesh. Come back as a manifestation of God in Christ reconciling the world. Well, if that could happen to Jesus, what can his followers do? If we're the followers of Christ, we can become not only the man, we can't be the manifestation of God, but God said we can be the manifestation of the Son of God. Jesus was the manifestation of God, and we are the manifestation of the Son of God. Hallelujah. It's God in Christ and Christ in us reconciling the world. Hallelujah. And we can have this victory. We can have this anointing. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, or uh, 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 well, I ain't saying it, but I started to say a high breed. You can have this. Praise God. I said you can have this no matter who you are. You can have this victory. You can have the Holy Ghost. God don't look at your color or your race. He looks at your heart. You are created by God. For a famine, he's calling for a food shortage. You hear what I'm telling you? It happened in the time of Moses. It happened in the time of, of, of Joseph. It happened in the time of Elijah. And it happened in the time of Elisha. And Jesus said, and 24 Matthews about wars. Well, we've had them. We've had wars. And, there's a war right now. Rumors of wars right now. Uh, half of the world near this thing about war right now. This thing gets going right. You watch China. You watch Russia. They're going to be right in there. Furnish them everything they need. Don't sit there like a like a dried up Peroon, you know it's the truth. Amen. And you sit there like you don't want this to happen. Don't let it sink into your heart. Amen. God, you better let this sink into your ears and get on down to your heart. It get your life back on track with God. That's why God's speaking to us today. Get our lives back on track with God. You know, we are subject to get off track. Jesus never got off track. But it don't take long if you don't pray and fast. You may still be good. You may still be uh, unspotted from the world. But you may be as empty as you can be. God wants you not to. He wants you to. You may be a conduit, but you may not have no oil running through it. You may be a temple, but you have no God in your temple. You need God in your temple. The Bible said your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. But you may be a temple, but you ain't got God in the temple. You ain't got the Holy Ghost in the temple. God wants the Holy Ghost in you. He wants the Holy Ghost in you. He's alive. And He is knocking on my heart. He's stirring up my pure mind. He's stirring up my soul. I called a friend of mine this morning early. And I said, if you... You got a garden, a place for the garden. I said, well, we ne we'd have done that. Uh, you know, we just, you know. I said, well, you need to. And I told him about that, that vision I had. Took a little while. I told him about that vision. I said, people better wake up. 
People better wake up, folks. I know we can't live on material things all by itself, but you ain't going to live on the spiritual neither. Man, if you think you don't need God, you just, I mean, you don't need natural things, you just try to make it. You, you're still uh, 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 about 98% human. Not 98% is going to want to eat. Not 98% is going to want something in your body. Men are always praying, not faint. This kind come, but you can't always fast. He didn't say always fast, but you have to pray. But he did teach fasting and praying. And if you ever get into that kind of a, a work, a place with God, you'll know when to fast. God will just prepare you for it. He'll, he'll, he'll give you a feeling uh, uh, that you need to fast. You can't run around here fasting because somebody else is. You'll have your own leadership. God is knocking at your heart. He's knocking at your door. He's concerned about you. He, he wouldn't have uh, stirred me up this morning for this. And I'm planning on in the morning. Because I've got a bunch of scriptures here. I'm planning on in the morning. I've got to catch a plane at, in the afternoon. So I'm, I'm, hopefully I can take the platform about uh, 10. i got places here where for 7 years, more than... Uh, and, uh, of famine and uh, Elijah three and a half years Elisha seven years even in the days of Esther man look what happened in that time look what happened in her time God even used a a, a, a woman <laughs> well go <Lord. laughs> oh, I was cutting up you women You've been pushed back. Mm -hmm. Men's used you mm -hmm. for their benefit. But God saved a nation and a world through a woman. Yeah. And, and believe it or not, she didn't exactly marry in, the, in, in, in her vocabulary what she should have. Do you know that? It, I mean, you couldn't do that in that day. But God told her. And by doing that, she saved the world. Me and you are here today because she, God put her in a marriage to save the world. Let me tell you something. Put her in the life of a king that, that could go either way. And he loved her so much, he listened to her. That was the only way God could save the world in that day what was through her. If, 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 and if she hadn't been willing to probably be reproached and, and denied by her family. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ, you don't know what He put people through to save us. He causes some people to lose everything they got and put them through such fire where He can put them through the furnace where they come out. Then people talk about them, but that don't matter about to talk about them. When, it, when it's all said and done, People look around and say, well, he, uh, she was of God. He was of God when it's all over. But God's got a house of people and God needs you. God ain't talking to people that ain't here. God ain't going to have me to preach to people that to, to people hear about the people that ain't here. Some preachers, all they know to do is get out and fuss about the people that didn't come to the ones that come. I got up one time and I said, look, preacher, bless God don't be preaching to me. To me, about the people ain't come. Give me something I can eat right now. I, say, I can't help about them. Don't come. Don't even remind me of them. I'm here. Don't be fussing about the ones that didn't come. They ain't going to do nothing. Feed us. Feed us. Feed us. Feed me. God ain't talking about me right here. He's talking to you. Is he talking to you? God wants to pour Himself in your heart. He wants to get you ready. Not only just spiritually. You got to do more. You got to eat too. I mean, if you if you ain't, just tell me. If you're so spiritual, you don't have to eat. Tell me. I have to eat sometimes. As I eat sometimes. <laughs> 
Look like that brother eat more than sometimes. <laughs> but you look, you like to eat, don't you? <laughs> That's good. I like you. I just, I just really do. I love you. I love you, brother. You, you're a nice fella. He missed brother both. I, man, I saw his brother. Man, I said, Lord, that's so sweet. <laughs> man, he was ready. Y'all see like that? Boy, I'm telling the Lord, have mercy on me. What I am getting to see. Praise God. Amen. Open up your soul. Open up your heart. God will help you. Probably some of y'all, I'm going to say this. Probably some of y'all got in your backyard, you can plant a garden. Out behind the house somewhere. I told Sister before I left, as I'm thinking about ripping that fence out, the back fence, and going and sitting in our garden another 100 feet, I think it's about 90, 100 feet on by out. I didn't really uh, make it big enough. That's the one behind the house. That man was so rich, I was so shocked. That the, the food just grew on up to frost. And I got out there praying. and had a few little saplings cut down. And I should have, uh, when I put the fence up, when I get back home, I'm going to go out there and, and have them to move to get, get some water to keep the rabbits up. Boy, we got rabbits. They, they, man, I, like, we got to, don't fence them rabbit in, fence them out. <laughs> but still they get in, but not as many. Well, the rabbits, man, they love your gardens, don't they? You better think about it, folks. Not only garden, but get to pray and get, get a hold of God. God is, is calling. You watch it. He's calling out the plugs now. I can see Him. The God of heaven to look down. He's pulling out the plugs. He's pulling out every, every prophecy of the old prophets. Uh, I ain't got no prophecies out myself. I've only spoken after them. I've, I've, I've lined myself up with the prophets of the Bible. And I've been, I've, I've ministered under them.